we talk about IP addressing? Uh, we started the team. Okay. So you're the only one who remembers? <laughs> what happened to the rest? You guys are not taking notes or studying? We are, Professor. Okay, so what, what's the last topic we talked about? Uh, we was talking about dynamic IP addresses, static. Thank you. So we'll continue the conversation about addressing. Guys, please, try to study. Believe it or not, we cover a lot of stuff. You may not feel it because most of the conversation is going smooth, but you're not really so the, the issue is with my class, the way I teach is like storytelling. So it could be deceiving at some time. So we cover a lot of ground that you guys know. I don't want you to be, to be stressed out during the final. That's all. That's an advice. So how many addresses? Okay. So before I start, any any questions about project management not like the technical aspect but the management stuff here yeah, everyone has been set with peers and you've been working on it you need some guidance you're good i i don't hear anything that means everything is perfect so that's good okay so let's continue so the internet we have three types of addresses. We started that conversation last time and we talked about it like a 10, 15 minutes, but it's very important. I'll, I'll give it some, some good. So although we're talking about layer two, which is, we're talking about Mac addresses. Mac addresses are easy. See. 90% of the population, the, the, the figure 90% just pulled, pulled it out of thin air. Would not about IP, the Hollywood, the movies, you know, et cetera. Uh, very few know about MAC address. Even less, they know about socket. Socket, that's IP plus port numbers. The third type of address I'm going to talk about today. We cannot talk about layer two without talking about MAC addresses. Since we talk about MAC addresses, it makes sense that we cover all the addresses uh, scheme. So the easiest one is MAC address. MAC address is not just etched, engraved, it's like hard coded address inside the NIC, the network interface card. Basically, I'm sorry for my voice. I, I have, um, I guess, a little cold, okay? So if you see me like sneezing or something, then yeah, just excuse me. So, back address, any, any NIC, network interface card manufacturer, would go get from some entity a big block of address okay and that stays with the hardware and actually sometimes people call hardware address it never gets changed ever well, sorry about that that was easy so the back address never gets to change. So sometimes the past law enforcement will try to get people or hackers via back address. They will try to track the IP. The IP is not enough. We talked about that last time. We'll talk about it again today. Why IP is not enough to track a person. So 
they would know like certain person trying to hack, they they will hack her or him back. And if they cannot find useful information on the device, they may resort to get in the, the Mac address, like run a command on Linux or Windows. And once they get the Mac address, they can track that Mac address and see who, who bought that device. Like, oh, this Mac address was given to company X, Y, and Z in Taiwan. They can, they can track the supply chain. Then it was put in a Dell computer that was sold in in Houston, in Texas, this Best Buy on that date, and this guy charged with the credit card, he can really track it. Okay? It's not it's not easy to track something like that, given like we have like what billions of devices around the world. But if you they really want to get you, they will do that. Doesn't guarantee the success rate of hundred percent because you know you could just device was stolen from you, uh, someone just assembled a new device, you know, laptop, you know, so, but it was a way to get, try to know people. On the other side, IP address is extremely dynamic. So you guys, every time you log into the internet, from your home, from school, you get assigned, released, new IP address. Normally, you get assigned or lease IP address for 24 hours. Uh, if you're plugged in for 24 hours. You may get it back again. So the ISP, the internet service provider, that's your cable company or internet service provider, gives you internet at home or school. They have a little ser server called DHCP. Don't worry about it if you don't know it. But this server just sole purpose of it is to assign you guys IP address. But as we spoke last time, last class, by the way, I haven't said anything new. I'm just recapping what we what I said last time. If you own a business, you own business, some good business, not like a pizza shop or something. Well, I'm talking about like a mid-sized company with like 50 to 100 employees have your own website and whatever you do online, you know, like, uh, like online store or something like that, or engineering firm. Then at this point, you have to pay top dollars service provider so they can give you IP address. And we spoke last time, we said that's good for you as a service provider and for your clients, so they know exactly what IP address they're connecting to. Uh, there's something called netting, network address translation. We'll talk about it if we have time during this semester. The third type of addresses, that's the IP plus port number. Okay, IP plus port number. <coughs> it's called socket. And it's kind of layer for address. So your laptop has only one IP address. Each application you open, it has different port number. So think of it, the IP address is the building number. So if you live in 24 Main Street, the 24 your building number. All the traffic coming to you from servers, the UK, Texas, Los Angeles, from all over the world, they only know the IP address. Okay, of course they know the port, but they don't really care at this point. But once they get to your computer, the layers will open. It's like, oh, go to port to 4800. So that's application. I'll give you something. You wonder how come you have four applications open? You're checking your school grade. You have your banking online. You're trying to deposit money or something. That's another one. You uh, have your social media network 
open it, you are posing a picture, just third, you don't something else, whatever, you can handle it just something. They have four different applications. Having, didn't you ask yourself why the packets come into the physical layer? Don't get confused. Like the packets come into the email, they will, will be parsed by cool uh, website or vice versa. How come everything is so neat? Like the packets coming from the email server would just go to the email application on your laptop. Because that's how it works with the port number. So the ports, so all the packets coming to your device, the four different application servers, they will be directed to your computer because of the IP. But once they reach the IP, they will be looking at the apartment number, which is, in this case, the port. So how many ports do we have? One knows? As many as we want. I'm sorry, say that again. As many as we want. No. It's a good try, though. So we have 64,000 ports. 64K. The first 1,000 ports, they're called well known ports for well known applications. Like if you're a programmer, you're writing your own application, you cannot really use those ports in the manner you want. You can use them, like for Edison, port 4043, that's for HTTPS. So if you write your own application with HTTPS, you can use the default, which is 443. You can choose anything, but if you're going to select a custom port, it has to be above the 1,000. We have 64,000 ports. The first 1,000 are by default assigned. You can play with the other 63,000. So, if you're writing an application, you can send, you can make your system send traffic from your computer to the server on port 7,000. I would go in traffic on, on, on port, but the incoming will be like 7,001. You can do that too. So you can do it any way you want. It's more software, application layer kind of thing, but not purely because at some point it's, it's, it's layer four. So like one of those areas that the electrical engineers and the computer scientists, they have to collaborate because it's kind of like how do you say, like an overlapping uh, territory, you know, overlapping territory. So, how many of you heard about port scanning? Come on, guys. Yes, no, I haven't heard it about it. It's just be interactive. Uh, you got, we didn't hear you for a few seconds. You didn't hear about port scanning. Okay. So, why ports are important? You guys know, like, I come from cybersecurity background. Five years ago, cybersecurity was only for the select few. So, if you don't work with cybersecurity, you don't really need to know much about it. Right now, with all the breaches and stuff, cybersecurity should be embedded in your DNA as an engineer. That's why I resort to it. Why? Because every single project you're going to be working on, you're going to be cybersecurity aspect to it. So, port scanning. So, ports are like apartment numbers or apartment doors. So, thieves, the first thing they do, they do they see port scanning. Because you have 64,000 ports, right? If you are a good electrical engineer or system admin, and you're only using four ports, so you should go to a console on your computer and close all the other ports. You know? Close all the other ports.
and you only leave the ports that you use. Of course, many cybersecurity professionals, they don't follow this practice model. So first thing hackers do, they see which ports are open. Because ports are like firewalls. You can go to port 8000, not using it, and you shut it down. So your computer will not accept any connection or out on port 8000. But you're using an application on port 9000. It's like a firewall, mini firewall. You could say, yes, uh, port 9000, I accept incoming traffic, uh, UDP only. All other application uh, protocols will be discarded at the entrance. So you do that, okay? So the first thing hackers do is they see which ports are open. Everything is open now, like literally given a building, the building, you know. So you give them an, uh, like a free reign over the whole part, uh, apartment building. So say one apartment, you say, oh, I can, I can let only Enter, come in. Exactly like you say, oh, port 9000, I can allow UDP to come in. So the painter here in this analogy is an authorized traffic. But what happens? Hackers would know that port 9000 open, but only for painters, only for one protocol, say TCP or whatever. What hackers do, they just disguise, guys, their malware, viruses inside the allowed protocol. So if you're talking about TCP, they will encapsulate the same way the layers encapsulate the packets, be entering through that port, and basically once the Packets enter these ports. The packets enter the, this port. They will go inside your computer. They will reassemble themselves. So you send, like, basically, so you have 10,000 line of code of virus or a warm or malicious code. So you're going to send on, on five, six packets. Once they reside, there are certain ways, triggers, it's, it's an advanced topic that these fragments will get assembled like a science fiction movie and will form a monster inside your computer. Okay? So that's why ports are very important from addressing point of view and security point of view. Question. No questions? You guys can hear me, right? Yes. yes. We can hear you. We can hear you, Professor. Yes. So, the next homework I want from you guys is to write a couple of paragraphs about what you understand about ports and how they they play a key role in cybersecurity. Let me let me write this in, in, in the chat. Everyone got it? Yes, we can see yes. it, Professor. Yeah, no, don't send an attachment or anything. It's just like a paragraph or two. 
Don't copy and paste straight from the internet, guys. I want you to understand and just send me like a brief email. Same way you did with the SD1, okay? Okay. And please send it before next class. Any questions? Uh, so the homework is due this Thursday. Is that too soon for you guys? Okay. Uh, let's make it Tuesday. Does that work? That works, Professor. Yeah, that works. Thank you. You're welcome. In the rest of the chat, so people go before the class <clears throat> next Tuesday. Thank you. Okay. So here is the back frame. So, depends where you guys are going to go to work or where Destiny will place you. If you're going to work on a, on a certain layer, so some people work on a network design, like the topic of last class when you design a full service, a level. And some people work on a, a micro level. So, if you work on a micro level, you have to interact and deal with packets and packet structure. You get the wire shark. Okay. So wire shark is just a capturing software just to give you the, the opportunity to look inside the packet, see the packet structure. Well, if you're going to work on a, on a certain layer, that will be your in um, specialty. You'll have to deal with the packet structure a lot. So what are the logical link control aspects? <clears throat> happen on the physical, on the Mac layer. So, I told you guys before, since resources are cheap, but for something like flow control, <coughs> it happens on every single layer, not only on layer two. You know what, guys? I am really having a hard time talking. <coughs> let me talk, let me tell you about Flow control. Excuse me, I have to in the class early. I don't really feel well. No problem, professor. I don't really like to cancel classes <clears throat> because I, yeah, feel very bad when I cancel the class. So let me talk about flow control. <clears throat> Just one second. Yeah, so flow control. One of the best things that happened for the internet is the internet is designed that all devices from different manufacturers, from different manufacturing years, from operating systems, different CPUs, like everything is totally different. Someone has an Apple phone. 
and another person would have an Android. Literally, everything is different, and even different carriers. But look at them. They can talk to each other, interoperability. So you could be walking to an old building that has a Wi-Fi router, and this router has been there for the past 10 years. And you just bought your phone like literally three minutes ago. And you have the, the most sophisticated, latest and greatest Mac player. And this old router has like a 10 years old Mac layer and protocols. Yet, that you're noticing or observing any issues 99% of the time, these two devices can talk to each other. You know, they can talk to each other. So, low control, your device that you just bought three minutes ago can transmit 2,000 packets a second. It's very powerful. But the old router, it can only take 10 packets per second. So flow control, <coughs> excuse me, flow control, basically the two nodes are talking. It's like, listen, I can only send and receive 10 packets a second. And the other is like, I can do 1,000. So they negotiate and they go down to the lowest. So basically they match each other dynamically in a very intelligent way, in, 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 a, in a very fast manner, don't even notice it. Um, so <laughs> guys, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I have to move the class. I really do not feel well, okay? I thought I would, I would be able to talk for like an hour and a half. So, uh, excuse me, okay? I'll try to make it okay. up. Okay, very well, Professor. No worries, Professor. I okay, hope Professor, you're... feel better. Yeah, feel better, feel Professor. Better. Feel, better. Yeah. feel better. Feel better. Feel better. Mm-hmm.